Welcome back to How to Be a Better DM, the official podcast of Monsters.Rent. I'm Justin Lewis. And I'm Tanner Wayland. And we are here to help you tell better stories for yourself and your players as you dungeon master sessions of D&D, Dungeons and Dragons. We'd like to give you some quick announcements. We actually have one before the show. And then after the show, if you want to stick around, we have some more announcements then as well. Uh, But first, let's talk about this. Tired of being alone? Are you tired of not having any of your players understand you? Are you tired of never truly belonging? Well, you're in luck. All you need to do is join the Guild. The Guild is a unique and exclusive experience that is only open to Dungeon Masters. It is a full community focused on helping ease your DMing burdens. Want to meet other DMs? Join the Guild. Want to discuss your homebrew ideas with people who would appreciate it instead of just telling your cat? Join the guild! Want to find a place where all your wildest dreams will come true? Join the guild! Go to monsters.rent slash guild and sign up today for free. Wait, that can't be right. Chuck, Chuck, can you check this again? Is this supposed to be... What? Oh, it's... They're serious? It's free? Oh. Okay, all right. Yes, go to monsters.rent slash guild and sign up today for free, even though they are crazy for giving this away for free. Common side effects may include burping, sneezing, laughing, breathing, hearing, listening, tasting, farting, critting, sarcasm, and in extreme cases, explosive diarrhea. Awesome. With that out of the way, we can get into today's show. Ulf had been living in the cave for about two weeks. He'd managed to down an elk he had tracked, but... The elk had seemed separated from his herd, because it was all alone. He'd fashioned a spear out of a rock that he'd found in the cave, and so far he felt pretty good about himself. He'd been at this trial for a couple weeks and hadn't died. Of course, you still haven't made any progress towards the actual trial, Ulv said to himself out loud. Ulv had always been comfortable being alone, but for some reason he found himself missing people. He missed Herlia and Hippom. He missed Kojari, and he missed Hudir. Ulf had always had a strange relationship with family. Being adopted meant that you got to choose your family. Despite his gruff and stoic exterior, Ulf had always been quick to welcome people into his family. That's probably why he felt to mourn the death of Hudir so deeply. Nope, not going to think about that, Ulf said to himself as he stood up and started pacing around the cave. No reason to start blubbering about the dead all over again. What about your parents? Ulf froze. That voice had come from deeper in the cave. He looked into the darkness past the flickering light of his meager campfire. Who goes there? Ulf cried. Drums began playing, and briefly Ulf's vision blurred. When he could see clearly again, he stared into the darkness, hearing the constant beat of distant drums. What would you like to do? Welcome back to How to Be a Better DM. I'm your host, Justin Lewis, and I'm here to help you learn how to tell amazing stories as you DM sessions of D&D. Sometimes getting a handful of people with different schedules, wants, hopes, and interests together to play a seamless session can seem just about as easy as herding a bunch of cats. Truly managing players is one of the hardest parts of being a dungeon master. Luckily, it is a skill that you can master, and to that point, here are some of my tips on how exactly to manage your players as you dungeon master. Number one is honest communication. In order to corral three to seven people together to create a shared positive role-playing experience, direct and honest communication is 100% necessary. You can't hope to be able to manage your players if you can't pull any single individual aside to talk about the ways the gameplay can improve. Foster that ability to tell people about issues to their face. This is one part strength of the relationship, one part strength of your character, and one part social acumen. You need to learn how to do it in an adroit way. What I find works best is only have as many people there as need to know what needs to be known. If you are making an announcement for the whole table, let everyone hear it. But if you are giving correction to a single player who is constantly distracting the other players at the table, only they need to be present. Number two is routine. You have to treat your players as if they were children. 
Children need routine, and so do players. Naturally, schedules are always changing, and that's why having your game at the same time every week or on the same day every week helps a lot. Not everyone can do this. My own group doesn't even do this. So instead, we've routinized other things. We always have it at my house. And that lowers the work anyone needs to do to figure out where they are playing. When the time comes to go to D&D, they always know where to go. There are other things that you can routinize. Like when we play, I always start off by giving away tokens of advantage. If someone in the group did something cool during the week that correlates with a D&D skill. This is a homebrew rule I made up, but I like doing it because it also starts to get us into the mood of playing D&D and basically tells my players we're beginning. Number three is responsiveness. One huge part of managing players is finding players who are responsive. At some point, it needs to be understood that everyone in the group needs to communicate and respond to communications. This rings especially true for communications about when the gameplay is actually going to happen. If on the night of your game session, a player or two respond and say, hey, I can't make it when they hadn't responded any time before that, something needs to change. In those instances, sit down with that player and explain to them that in order to make the game happen, you need everyone's cooperation. We live in a day and age now where communication really doesn't take that much effort. All it takes is a little response to an instant text and you're done. In some cases, the players will also have to talk with their significant others to make sure there aren't any conflicting plans. That might be where you can coach the player a little bit more on how to bring up the topic and how to talk with their significant other to make sure everything is kosher. Number four is give players jobs. The whole idea behind player management is to make it so you and the players are vibing on the same frequency. It's to reduce distractions that are unwanted and increase player participation and cooperation. To do that, giving individual players duties and responsibilities is a very good way to make sure everyone is invested. You could have one player be in charge of keeping and tracking initiative during combat. You could give a different player the duty of managing the battle map during combat. And you could also give one player the duty to write down just the names of all the NPCs that are mentioned during the session. That way you never forget. Whatever job you give any individual player, make sure that it is somewhat small and it doesn't detract from that player enjoying the game and having fun. Giving players jobs also has the added benefit of making your life as a DM, easier, a win-win. Number five is understanding expectations. Simply put, your players need to understand and be willing to abide by your rules. You also need to understand and be willing to abide by their rules. And obviously I use the term rules here a little loosely, but that's essentially what they are. If you have a player that is uncomfortable with certain themes or experiences they might find in D&D, well, you need to be aware of that and also make sure to help them stay comfortable. Obviously, you can push the envelope with simple fears and stuff, but I'm talking about true discomfort. On the flip side, your players should be well aware of what they can and can't do. In my book, watching videos on your phone while we're playing D&D is a big no-no. I'm a little bit of a pushover, though, when it comes to this type of thing, but it's something I'm actively working on. And the problem I see is that half the table is interested in what I'm saying, and the other half of the table wants to see the video. See, I want all my players to know what I expect and I want to know what they expect of me. And this goes for expectations around responsiveness and communication, as well as no-shows and everything else that could come up. Number six is manage them individually. Just as I am an individual, my players are too. I have a married couple that plays in my group and I should still treat each of them as individuals. Honestly, neither of them causes me any trouble, but when it comes to making sure they get info about the next session, reaching, about, reaching out about backstories and, and other stuff like that, I should do it individually. And, you know, sometimes we think of managing players as managing a group, but really it's managing four to seven individuals who all have their own ideas, wants, wishes, fears, boredom, etc. This doesn't mean that you won't make table-wide announcements or have group text message threads or, or things that reach everyone, but... You will and should definitely do those things. When it comes to managing difficulties though, or making things even better, I find it works best on an individual level. Number seven is firing players. Sometimes you gotta be tough. When everything else you've tried has failed, it may be time to quote unquote fire one of your players. Pull them aside one day and ask them if they've been enjoying playing. Look at their demeanor. 
If they say no, then simply explain that they don't actually have to keep playing if they don't like it. But if they do enjoy it, make it clear to them that they are making things much more difficult for you as a dungeon master. Explain that you need them to change their behavior. And if they persist without little change, then pull them aside again and kindly let them know that they will need to find another gaming table. In my experience, after trying everything else, the player will likely respond and either quit coming on their own or change their behavior. Very few people want to be an annoyance on purpose. Number eight is feedback protocol. In my opinion, one of the most important aspects of player management is setting up some sort of system to get feedback. Whether you go so far as to create a formal survey you hand out after every session or you just casually ask your players what they like and didn't like, it doesn't matter. You gotta know what makes your players happy and engaged in the game. If you are having problem players, it might be because they aren't being stimulated enough by the experience. In this day and age, ADD and other challenges have become much more prevalent. If you can figure out that player A is having a hard time focusing, but player A also really loves the mythology of ancient China, well, it's time to introduce a few Oni into the story. Adding more of what your players love is, in my opinion, the best way to make sure that the players are attentive and cooperative. Now, not every table will be filled with players who are completely engaged and hang on to your every word. In fact, in my experience, the more players that sit at the table, the harder it is to control them. And your job as a DM isn't even to control them. You just need to make sure that everyone at the table has a fun time. And to do that, you might employ any of these methods or others you can make up yourself. Either way, get your players to buy in and have their attention focused on you so they can have fun. Thank you for listening to today's show. Send any feedback you have to how to be a better DM at gmail.com. We'll be back next week for another amazing episode. Until then, let's go ahead and roll initiative. Thank you for listening to today's show. Uh, we really appreciate your support and your patronage. We have a few more announcements to go over. Uh, first, did you ever fall in love with the library as a kid? It was a place where you could experience a thousand stories without having to buy a thousand books. That is what Monsters at Rent can do for your D&D campaign. You can rent and swap out as many quality miniature monsters and creatures for your D&D party as you could ever want without having to buy them. You can rescue villagers from a kobold camp or lead your party through the fighting forest or many more adventures. We're coming out with new bundles all the time. Just sign up for our subscription to get access to your own personal library of minis. Go to monsters.rent to find out more. That's the website. Monsters, with an S, dot rent. Get your library pass to a world of minis today. We also wanted to let you know that today's episode is sponsored by Stardust and Dragons. I'm going to let one of the cast of Stardust and Dragons, Christian Hatcher, and his crew tell you a little bit more about it. This August, a new adventure podcast is coming to a platform near you, filled with action. You one of the two of them. We can't right. keep taking hits like that. Drama. Everything that she's been doing, everything she's going to do finally sets in and stardust help help <coughs> someone please find out more about this epic odyssey at stardustanddragons.com where adventure awaits in the stars that's all the announcements we have today again thank you so much for everything you do for us you make this show possible like we said before we'll be back next week with another great episode and until then let's go ahead and roll initiative